The Phil Donahue Show talks to millions about important questions. At Cedar Rapids, Iowa recently, he spent two consecutive days on the farm crisis. Here are highlights from the first day at Cedar Rapids with Phil Donahue. We got a whole bunch of proud Americans here who are in the fight of their lives. We have underway, as I don't have to tell anybody who hasn't lived living in a cave, the changing of our national landscape. Now, what kind of agricultural community do you want? I just wanted to say that um, I'm questioning or I don't understand why farmers are viewed as being different than other businessmen um, and that other businessmen who provide us with valuable services, services aren't asking for the kind of assistance that farmers are, and I'm concerned. Because we are the only people who don't set our own prices. We go out and say, what will you give us for our corn today? What will you give us for our beans? These other people send us a bill. We pay it. We're not just trying to save the family farm, we're trying to save America because we're trying to warn this nation of a tidal wave that has already yeah. come across us, coming across our small towns, I and know. it's coming your way, whether you want to know it or not, and you better face it. And we're not asking, we're not asking for the government to give us money. I don't want your damn charity, I don't want your subsidies, I want a price in the market. product brought to uh, the, it's uh, simple it's a long established farm organization the national farmers organization the nfo it's been there it's standing in place ready to serve the farmers anytime enough of them want to put the production to to act like businessmen for a change yeah. instead of beggars in the marketplace one of the great dramatic moments of the phil donahue show at cedar rapids recently was when a man held up a box of cornflakes in one hand and a sack of corn in the other. Right. The cornflakes man, you're on, sir. Don't complain about the farmer when you have a full stomach. The, this, this sold this week in Cedar Rapids for $1.19 on special. The farmer got less than five cents for the amount in the $1.19 box. If you would double his c price of corn, you'd only pay four and eight, ten cents more. Don't talk about subsidizing the farmer. The man that printed the box made more than the man that grew the corn. money to retire these loans is out of the marketplace. You'll never get it going there by yourself saying, what are you going to give me? You got to get together with your neighbor and you got to, <clears throat> excuse me, sell together. All we're waiting for the rest of you fellas to participate with the program and we can move the prices tomorrow. Yeah, what would you do if you had? Uh, it, let, let's get this in. You know, you are not famous for marching in lockstep farmers and you should probably be proud of that. It means you think for yourself. But your failure to coalesce in this crisis is part of your problem. If you could, if you could get the kind of, um, of unity that would uh, really make noise, what would you do? We're not interested in making a lot of noise. We're interested in moving the production in a blocked form, in a systemized way. Would you withhold? Would you withhold? It's not necessary to withhold at this point in time. It's a matter of moving the production through the market system, managing your supply. I think that's critical, Phil, because farmers are the only industry that do not have the opportunity to manage our supply. More farms and less arms. It's ridiculous. And Phil. Yeah, what is it? Phil. 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 But Phil. You know what, Father? Bishop. Are you a priest, Father? Yes, Well, yes, then Phil. I don't want to interrupt you, Father, but hang you on are, just one you second. Are. Father, Phil, your bishops and mine, your bishops and mine for years have been saying, farmers, you got to have collective bargaining. you got to bring your products together and sell them, saying, this is what we want, not what you give us. 
Highlights from the Phil Donahue Cedar Rapids program on the farm crisis. My name is Kevin Eblen. I'm the state FFA president here in Iowa. Recently, Cy Carpenter, who is president of the National Farmers Union, made a statement that he felt that vocational agriculture teachers ought to uh, emphasize marketing more. What do you think, Kevin? Well, I guess this year our state officers team at the beginning of the year set down some state challenges that we wanted to accomplish within this coming year. And one of those state challenges, or call them state goals, whatever you please, was to incorporate some new things into our vocational agriculture instruction. And one of those things was uh, marketing, both for the people that are involved in agriculture business and for the people that are involved in production agriculture. And this morning, when I spoke and addressed the board of directors, I talked about two things that agriculture needs. Number one, leadership and number two, unification. And when we get that unification and the, and the things and goals that the National Farmers Organization are trying to work toward with unification of farm people, then we will be able to, uh, to set our own markets for our products. And I think that when we uh, get that, that is when agriculture is going to start looking bright again. I want to talk to Phil Klein now. Phil Klein is a member of the National Board of NFO and has worked with FFA for a long time. I have worked for approximately 40 years with the FFA not only on a chapter level, not only as a member, but I've served as a state FFA alumni president in many advisory capacities in my state of Indiana. I have also served with the National FFA Foundation Board on a national level, serving as a national judge and helping them in many of their advisory capacities also, Mr. Allen. Very good. We all realize, especially within the NFO structure, that these are our leaders of tomorrow, and it's been nothing but a pleasure in meeting, associating, and working with these men today. Bill Klein, member of the National Board of NFO, as he escorted some FFA young people through the home office. Now here is Ted Strait of the Dairy Commodities Department of National Farmers. The goal of the National Farmers Organization is to bargain with sufficient quantities of agricultural commodities so that all farmers will receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Now we know there's a crisis in rural America. Projected net farm income for 1985 will at best barely cover the interest expense paid by farmers. The current 1985 Farm Bill, sure as a devil, won't help. In fact, it's designed to drastically reduce farm income. People, we stand to lose a whole generation of farmers, and this crisis will exist until the National Farmers Organization institutes programs that will rapidly increase the amount of production through our collective bargaining program and also the prices paid to farmers as well. In the past, our common approach is to tell a farmer that we can get him cost of, pro cost of production plus a profit, when enough producers join their production together for bargaining purposes sometime in the future. And this program has been effective, but there still seems to be a few questions in farmers' minds that he wants answered before he'll commit his production. For example, when will I get a fair price if I let you have my production for collective bargaining? Also, what will the price be, and how much total production will it take to be effective? Well, the National Farmers Organization Dairy Department has just initiated a new program called Price Lift Commitment. It states in writing how much production is needed to achieve fair prices. It also states what prices we are demanding and what date these prices will be achieved by. If there is to be a recovery in agriculture and the general rural economy, people, it is soulfully up to the members and the staff of the National Farmers Organization. And it's time we stand up and be counted like a farm organization should be. We have built our organization and learned to use collective bargaining in anticipation of the time that producers of agricultural commodities would be ready to organize, and people that time has arrived. And we must not fail those people who are counting on us. From the Grain Department of National Farmers, I'm at the desk of Mark Rolfing. I understand, Mark, that you have some update reports on the price lift meetings. Yes, Phil, the 204 meetings were very well received. We're particularly pleased with the follow-up. Uh, activities in Kansas and Nebraska are signing up uh, approximately a million bushels a week. Uh, the activity continues to this date, and uh, frankly, we're very, very pleased. North Dakota is uh, ready to kick off next week with a big round of meetings, and we expect the activity to accelerate into March as we begin the cash flow to meetings. In general, uh, we did create a, a great stir in the country, uh, bringing more knowledge of our grain program to more people. This is the best sign up over any three week period we've had this year. We all in all the areas and all the area offices are reporting 
that uh, people are calling in, uh, they're interested in the program, and we're very much looking forward to working with these new participants, explaining to them the strategies, strategies we use each day in bargaining for their grain. The new young producer that is becoming a part of our program at an ever-increasing rate seems to be very interested in using his production to build the market. Do you think it's because they've run out of alternatives that they're turning to farm bargaining now? Phil, I think they've put a lot of hope in the 1985 Farm Bill, and although many producers are very confused about what it really says, they are beginning to face the reality that there's nothing there, that we're talking about loan rates that are 20 and 30 percent below just last year, that the target price protection that was uh, guaranteed has been taken from them, uh, both by the bill and later by Graham Rudman. And I think all those things and the pressing financial problems they have are bringing them to us. We are definitely an alternative that's a positive one. Thanks very much, Mark. I've been talking with Mark Rolfing of the Grain Department of the National Farmers Organization. The historic marketplace contract for cooperation in selling livestock between NFO and the Minnesota Farmers Union was the subject of a conversation with Walt Hackney, head of livestock for National Farmers. Here's Don Mack, reporter for Here's Info. Why at this time just in the livestock in that venture? Well, apparently, Don, the Minnesota Farmers Union membership and the state officers up there felt that a start with our livestock marketing program could be the best way to become involved in a marketing program. Our programs on livestock are more immediate than the other commodities. Um, the people with fat cattle, butcher hogs, cull cows, they need some immediate response to moving their product and they need immediate bargaining and benefits from that. And I believe through our contracting programs that we've presented to the lenders and to the membership in Minnesota, I think that the Farmers Union membership have realized that within those programs, they could get an immediate response to their needs. This is certainly a historic venture. Walt, what advice would you have with other states? I would hope that as soon as possible, the National Farmers membership in any of the other major states that have a good enrollment of uh, Farmers Union membership, I would hope that our membership starts grooming that relationship. I hope that we very conscientiously encourage them to become a part of what we're doing jointly in the state of Minnesota right now. We need that volume. We need those Minnesota and other state Farmer Union members production in order to accomplish through volume our goal of getting better prices. Walt Hackney, head of livestock for NFO. You have heard the informational tape for NFO meetings in March, compiled and edited by Don Mack, director of the broadcast division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.